Ondansetron is one of the most commonly used drugs. The common brand names include Zofran, Zofur, or simply Ondem. How exactly does Ondansetron work? It is a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist. Serotonin is released from small intestine, which stimulates the vagal efferents through 5-H33 receptors, which then initiates the vomiting reflex. On then certain, by blocking the 5-H33 receptors, it blocks the initiation of the vomiting reflex. Other 5-HT3 receptor antagonists include granicetron, dolacetron, and tropicetron. Clinically used 5-HT3 receptor antagonists are highly selective for these receptors with almost no significant binding with other 5-H3 receptor subtypes. Because they are highly specific and evokes minimal side effects, they are useful in the prophylaxis and treatment of chemotherapy and radiation therapy induced nausea and vomiting as well as the post-operative nausea and vomiting. They, however, are not effective in the treatment of motion-induced nausea and vomiting. And post-operative nausea and vomiting caused by vestibular stimulation because the vestibular apparatus and the nucleus of tractus solidarius are rich in miscarinic and histamine receptors that would not be blocked by a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist like ondansetron. Ondansetron is readily absorbed after oral administration it also readily crosses the blood-brain barrier. Following intravenous administration, maximum brain concentration achieved quickly. It is moderately bound to protein to the extent of 60 to 70 percent. It is metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver, and the metabolites undergo principally renal excretion. The bioavailability is around 60%. Therapeutic blood concentration appears after 30 to 60 minutes of administration. And the elimination half-life is around 3 to 4 hours. So we need to give at least 3 times in a day. As discussed earlier, ondansetron possesses specific 5-HT3 receptor antagonist properties without altering dopamine or histamine or adrenergic or cholinergic receptor activities. So ondansetron is free of neurologic side effects common to metoclopramide or Droperidol. Although the side effects are less, ondansetron can still cause headache, diarrhea, transient increase in liver transaminase enzymes, especially in patients receiving chemotherapy, cardiac arrhythmias and conduction disturbances in the form of AV blocks and slight prolongation of QTC interval. 
For the same reason, indiscriminate use of ontansetron either for prophylaxis or control of nausea and vomiting is not recommended until the indications are quite clear and the risk factors for cardiac arrhythmias and QT prolongation are minimal. Moreover, ondansetron is effective in the prevention and treatment of post-operative nausea and vomiting only in 26% of cases. The usual dose for oral ondansetron is 0.15 mg per kg body weight and for intravenous 0.05 to 0.15 mg per kg body weight per dose and it has to be given at least three times over 24 hours. Another drug in the 5-HT3 antagonist group is granisetone. It is 2.5 times longer acting than ondansetone, so once daily dosing is possible with granisetone. The usual dose is 2 mg ODPO or 10 microgram per kilogram IV slowly over 30 seconds. It is more selective 5-HT3 receptor antagonist than ondansetone. Apart from the 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, drugs that can be used for prevention and treatment of nausea and vomiting include dexamethasin, which is as effective as ondansetone with minimal side effect, especially with one-time use. However, in obese and diabetics, there is increased risk of developing hyperglycemia. The usual dose is 8 to 20 mg oral or IV once daily or twice daily. Another drug is droperidol given at low dose of 0.625 to 1.25 mg intravenous. The problem with droperidol is prolongation of QT interval. And extrapyramidal symptoms which is seen in all medications that involve dopamine receptor blockade. As such, droperidol should be used with caution in patients with Parkinson's disease, restless leg syndrome, or other disease related to dopaminergic activity. Another very common anti-emetic drug is methoclopramide. It stimulates GI tract via cholinergic mechanism, which results in contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter and gastric fundus, and increased gastric and small intestinal motility and decreased muscle activity in the pylorus and duodenum when the stomach contracts. Apart from this peripheral activity, methoclopramide may also have the effect on chemoreceptor ticker zone CRTZ as it readily crosses the blood-brain barrier. Again, 
because of its anti-dopaminergic activity, methoclopramide should be used with caution in patients with Parkinson's disease, restless leg syndrome, movement disorder related to dopamine inhibition, and the usual dose for post-operative nausea and vomiting prevention or control is 10 mg to 20 mg intramuscular. But in case of chemotherapy-induced vomiting, the dose is 1 to 2 mg per kg of body weight, which has to be given at least over 15 minutes. Some other drugs that has anti-emetic properties include midazolam, dronabinol, neurokinin 1 antagonists like aprepitant, forsaprepitant, and phenothiazines like prochloroperazine, promethazine, and chlorpromazine. Last but not the least is anticholinergic drugs like atropine, hyoscine, and scopolamine. Thanks for watching.